that, oh God, it was all just sexism and we didn't have the right to vote until Susan B. Anthony and the women's suffrage movement. And, and I will defend life before suffrage because a vote used to represent the family. When we were a culture that really valued family and really understood the natural order that God intended, man serving God, woman following man who serves God, man and woman developing and nurturing children. Former sports media man Jason Whitlock showed his arse once again at a Turning Point USA event. You only needed one vote per household because that vote was about the entire family as they have destroyed our family structure and made this all an individual pursuit. Now everybody has to have a vote and everybody has an agenda that a lot of times has nothing to do with family. The risk and the sacrifices that men made for the advancement of this country and for the benefit of all of us. Just a gross, despicable human being. Never forget who this guy is. I don't hate or dislike black women, but damn it, I don't like or respect the way they're behaving. What he is about. Racism is an issue in America but it is primarily an issue for the poor. It's not LeBron James's issue. How he pivots to buffoonery for relevancy. Kobe Bryant, the most fraudulent superstar celebrity athlete we have ever seen. And his big get off my lawn energy. We have radicalized a group of young people, black and white, but you're seeing it pronounced in sports, these black athletes that have been radicalized and made to hate their country. The man is a clown, a failure, who has seen his career take a nosedive. I actually think Kanye was on point. And has done his best to cling to a small ray of hope. Blood in, blood out. Trump in, Trump out. By attaching his name to the MAGA movement. I'm out here performing for an audience of one. And that is God. A movement that is so gullible, they eat up his BS. Antifa, to me, is the modern day KKK. And give credence to what he says, even if it's highly delusional. Thus, he bootlicks another lowbrow human being, Andrew Tate. He, he's, the corporate media cast him as a misogynist that, you know, is, you know, inspiring, misleading, discipling the, these young angry men all over the world to be, because I think he's got four or five million TikTok followers or had four or five million TikTok followers. He says he, like America, deeply respects and cares for women, then says nonsense such as this. Feminists have taken advantage of man's instinct to please women, casting themselves as long suffering victims of male supremacy and reshaped American society into a culture that favors the weaker gender. And he's revamped his career to pandering to conspiracy theorists. Who, who is Stephen A. Smith's MK Ultra handler? Meanwhile, he can't even stay consistent with his own words like this on Stephen A. Uh, Stephen A. Smith, I don't believe it. I don't think he's a seller. And then this, the next. No, selling out is when they hand you a 12, 13 million dollar a year contract to say what you're told to say. That's what selling out is. And Stephen A. Smith sold out. For Whitlock, he has a lane that will always be open in conservative media. Look at black people. Look at their criminal behavior towards white people and Asian people. That guy. Never forget what he said about the Tyree Nichols case. I would examine the racial element of this. It was a group of young black men, five on one. Looked like gang violence to me. It, it looked like what young black men do when they're supervised by a single black woman. And that's what they got going on in the Memphis Police Department. They've elected some uh, or put some black woman in charge of the police force, and we're getting the same kind of chaos and 
disunity and violence that we see in a lot of these cities that are run by single mothers. If we want to discuss the breakdown of family that leads to disrespect for authority that causes you to resist the police and run from the police and not comply with the police because you resist authority at all time because there was no male authority in your home. Let's have that discussion. Absurd. But again, we reiterate his lane. At the end of the day, all he is is one thing. A world-class attention whore. He's a shell of the sports writer he once was. And many of those columns have aged incredibly poorly from jeff perlman whitlock works for a vomit soaked gas station urinal cloth called the blaze and specializes in allowing racist whites to justify the racism with the old i can't be racist that big black fellers is everything i'm thinking it's painful as hell to see how he talks about black people added an african-american sports journalist especially how he talks about black people in spaces that don't give a blank about black people to begin with but this is his lane now it's the only one he has left. And I'm not saying you can't be critical because that is absolutely necessary. But there's a stark difference between being critical and being performative on some modern day minstrel show blank. I saw what he said about the single black mothers and Tyree Nichols. And I'm not going to lie. I almost threw my phone through a wall. Shockingly, as Perlman does note, Whitlock held up signs in the late 90s. I believe it was in Foxborough. And one of them asked, is Drew Bledsoe gay? He has submitted his work for Pulitzer Prizes multiple times. At one point when he was leaving a local Kansas City newspaper, he demanded three hours on a sports radio station in the city announcing his departure. It does not get more egotistical than that, but it would, it would. We talked about this before. He was hired to head up what is now called Anscape, was previously called The Undefeated, and he was canned before launch because his conduct, the way he treated people, the way that he portrayed himself, passing out quotes where he's quoting himself, passing out his own work as if it is religious text that those underneath him should follow were some of the reasons that many just did not want to go work for him or demanded his ouster. On top of this, he centers everything about himself. And one of the people who knows a lot about Jason Whitlock's work is Howard Bryant friend of the show, he would say, Whitlock is a social commentator with a 15-year-old's understanding of American history and a 75-year-old's appreciation for pop culture. He has no experience as an editor or manager, no real constituency among the young writers his site is supposed to develop, and no new ideas to bring people. His career-long aversion to reporting and love of the sound of his voice have left him without the skills necessary to build his new enterprise, and his personal incuriosity and lack of grace have left him unable to develop them or productively manage the people who have them. He is flatly, desperately unqualified for his present position. The question is just how the hell he's heading up what should be the most important black sports and culture website in the country, and the only answer that makes much sense is that he is nothing more than the instrument of interest that would work against the very people his site is supposed to serve. Frankly, what puzzles me is how so many don't see through the lines and are not able to hear Whitlock's words, but also understand that anything he says lacks substance. And it comes with this, and I'll give you an example. The video that we started out this clip with on Jason Whitlock was him advocating for the nuclear family and being a Bible thumper and holding up religion as a shield to what he is saying. A lot of it being bigotry. And one of the things that puzzles me is this. He is a man who is advocating for the nuclear family. He does not have a wife. He does not have kids. He does not have a dog, cat, pet, turtle, hamster, I don't know, anything. He doesn't have any sense of that. And there are many within the industry who also see through it. 
As one sports writer told Jeff Perlman, honestly, I think there's some real mental illness there. There has to be. More in media would write of their disdain of this man. Stan Verrett of ESPN would say, and the new angle to the grift is disingenuously invoking religion as a defense. It's an insult to true piety and faith, but he thinks it makes him immune to criticism and renders his buffoonery unassailable. He will crash and burn again in due time. He can't help himself. He's a well-compensated troll whose body of work clearly indicates that he cares less about making intelligent arguments than he does about getting a rise out of people so he can doltishly refer to them as triggered. Pen GQ's Jay Willis. He has not lasted at ESPN. He has not lasted at AOL Sports. He has not lasted at Fox Sports. He thought his best career move was leaving Kansas City and making an entire show of it because at the end of the day, all he cares about is himself. Your career should matter to you, but it should not turn into this at any stop. And after Fox Sports and his TV gig where he said, depending on your wealth, you can't experience racism, he was gone there too. And then he went to OutKick, he was gone there too, leaving on terrible terms. And now he is at the blaze. The future is not bright for Jason Whitlock. And he knows it. This sad, lonely man is clinging to hope and anybody that'll throw him a microphone and give him a chance at this point. But he has to play by their rules. 